position right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just stay yielded to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you that every word that was spoken will not fall to the ground. Holy Spirit, you will just reveal to them the truth of what's been spoken over their lives. I thank you that healing is the children's bread today. Amen. And we partake of it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some of you don't even realize, sometimes you, we wait till it manifests that you don't realize that something may be going on in your body. That's why we must thank God for healing at all times. Yes, amen. It ain't when the doctor says something. Some of us have been eating wrong, taking something wrong, There's so many things that's going on in our food. That's why if you drink any daily thing, it shouldn't harm you. Amen? Amen. That's what the Christian life and the kingdom of God is all about. Things that we declare. We say, say grace. What do you mean when you say, say grace? You're praying on your food. You didn't do nothing to it, but God knows whatever it is, it can't harm you. Amen. Amen. So every time she say healing, I'm already receiving it because I don't know what's Amen. operating on the inside of me and trying to attack my body. And I'm not going to wait until no doctor give me no bad report. And then start living, start dying in the cycle that he told me to die. All right, all right, words are powerful, you all. You got to understand that words are really powerful. <laughs> words create thoughts. Thoughts get right on into your feelings and you start feeling a certain way. Your feelings create, watch this, it creates a, a, a decision that you have to make. Feelings will make you make a decision. Once you make that decision, you go into the realm of actions. That's reality. You start acting on what you decided on because it's how you felt. And how you felt was what you was thinking about because what you was thinking about, somebody said something to you. And before you know it, that, that reality, your actions lead to habits. Now you can't stop doing what you're doing. You can't stop thinking what you're thinking. Now you go, your, your habits have brought forth your character. That's how people know you now. You're just a liar. You don't, everything you say, I don't believe you no more because you never do what you say. And your character take you to a destination. You where you at because of your character. Your character formed. Your character came out of your habits. Your habits came out of actions that you had taken. Your actions came out of decision that you made. A decision came from watch this. Your feelings, how you felt about something, because you thought that thing too long, and somebody said something to you. Now you can do that in a good way, and you find yourself at the right destination. That's why I'm up here to teach the Word of God. The word of God will change your life, church. The real you is not this shell. You and I know you're not going to live to be 300 years old. You know that you were born to die. Amen. You know that somewhere along the line, this is an earth suit, and you won't be here this long. So why am I here? God, why would you put me here and only to know that, that I'm only going to be here for a short time? Because God is eternal. And you and I are eternal beings. You have a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. The real you, you cannot see. But you will always be you because you were in the mind of God before the world began. God knew that you would be here at this time in, this, in the earth because God had already had a plan and purpose for your life. God is not shallow-minded like us. We, he don't go around and pop babies and don't take care of them. He don't go around and say, you good, you got out of If we don't do, he don't do that. God had a plan. Say God had a plan. God. Look at your name and say, God got a purpose for my life. You mean to tell me God called you to this earth to eat, drink, make money, hustle, get a picket fence, a couple of houses, and a few cars, and die? Really? I wouldn't even go to church if that was the, uh, the case. I wouldn't even waste my time if God was that shallow minded to put me into the earth only to eat and drink and die. So church, we got to wake up. We got to ascend in our thinking. We got to understand what God is saying to the church in these last days. Everything you see is prophetic and it's coming to pass. It's intensifying. We never thought that school murders and, and uh, uh, mass shootings in our society. We, I didn't think that there would be these many wars and rumors of wars and everything going on. And it's intensifying like a woman in childbirth, the Bible says. The contractions are closer and closer because something's about to birth. I know what it is, do you? He's coming soon, church. Yes, yes. He's amen. coming soon. But the Bible tells me that where sin abounds, grace. Grace, come on, y'all. Y'all know grace, grace much is more. much more. Say much more. much more. I don't care how bad the devil acted. The church got to get in a position to allow the much more grace 
to be extended to a dying world. And God is looking for a church. God is expecting a church without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. Does that mean you don't make mistakes? No. He sees you through his son. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. Every one of us. You're alive if you say you don't make mistakes. You're alive if you say you ain't lying. <laughs> Tell the truth. All oh, that like we ain't hey, no Who are you? Who are we? As long as you in this earth suit, you're going to make boo boos. Amen? Amen? That's why every day we got to depend on you, sir. Every day, Pastor Cook got to depend on me even the more. Because I, I too much is given, much is required. Amen. God is not going to assign me to children that he loves so much and don't require me to get in action and do what he called me to do. Amen. No different than you have the responsibility over your own children. Amen? Amen. How many excited today? Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah! I was posed a question this week. By a great man of God, he said this to me. He said, if your church was to leave tomorrow, would the community miss you? If this church was to leave tomorrow, would the community miss you? Then you have to ask yourself, why am I here then? Isn't that a good question? I'll make it even more closer. If, your if you left your neighborhood, would your neighbors miss you? Have you made an impact in your community? Have we done anything? Amen? That's a good question to ask. Well, today I want to share something with you because God told me, and I, well, Sister Karen already has stepped on into it, uh, God said there's going to be a stern today. There's a stern. That's why what's going on. There's a stern. You know why things have to be stirred? Because a lot of times things settle and they lie dormant. And sometimes it takes us to be able to get a, a stirring on the inside so you can bring back the flavor in your life. Amen? Some of you have been going through the motions for so long and you know you're not happy. You got, you, you got everything you want, but it's still something missing. And you were, you were not wired to make things. God never wired you for things to make you have the full essence of enjoyment. I don't care how much you have, how much you get, how much money you make. Until you get the fulfillment of righteousness on the inside of you, you'll never be satisfied with life. You will drink and drink and drink. It's almost like drinking and you, you know how you drink so and keep drinking, you know you need some water. You just know you need some water. Uh, lips all ashy, you be like, man, I still ain't thirsty. Give me some Gatorade. You know why? Because you need something to fulfill or to quench the thirst that's on the inside. Man was designed. To never be fulfilled by the things in this life. <laughs> you were designed for God. Amen. And God was designed for you. Right, right. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Listen here, church. All through the Bible, I was, I was beginning to uh, look from the Old Testament. Give an honor to Apostle Isaac and, and his wife, Jerusalem. Let's give God a hand praise for them. Thank God for the angel of the house. Amen. 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 I want, I want, I want y'all to know that. When God began to deal uh, with his people, even in the Old Testament, he allowed a stirring to get into the hearts of the people. Now, I, I, I studied this out. I only saw two times where God stirred the hearts of the people. The rest of the time, God's word was given, and they were stirred by what was said by God. And they stirred their own hearts, and God gave them the ability to do the work that they were called to do. Amen? Amen. So there is an instance where God stirs the the hearts of the people. And I'll, I'll share that with you. It's in Haggai. What happened was, was that the children of Israel were in bondage for 70 years. Say 70 years. 70 years. Do just study out. The reason they were in 70 years of bondage because they violated the rest code of the law. The land was supposed to rest every seven years. They broke 10 Sabbath years. That equals seven times 10, which is seven years. Because they did not allow the, the land to rest it was penalized in the, because the land could not catch up with them. That's right. Some of you don't even realize that Christ is your rest today. And many of us are still just living our own lives, desiring the way we do. And you don't know it's going to end up catching up with you. It's going to catch up with you just like it caught up with Israel. Because you've got the labor to enter into God's rest. Without God's rest, what happens is the, everything about your life that's been designed, it was designed just like God to be able to rest. God rests from his labors. 
Don't mean you, uh, how can I say this? It's not that God rested from doing anything. God, it was already finished. God rested because the work was finished. Right. Amen? You don't, you, don't, you don't stop resting or rest because of everything is already, I mean, you're doing stuff. You rest because it's already finished. Amen? I mean, you clean up the house and then you rest. But that's what God did with mankind. Everything was rested. So after that 70 years, they went into bondage. And Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they prophesied that God was going to release, release the children of Israel. Well, of course, God is a man that's faithful. He released them on the 70th year. Jerusalem came out, and it was prophesied that Ezra, I mean, Ezra came out. Zerubbabel was the high priest. And what happened was they were going out to build a temple. Say, build a temple. Yeah. They was getting ready to get everything established back with, the, with Jerusalem. And when they went out to build the temple, they started building a foundation. Say foundation. I'm saying this for a reason. Whenever a foundation is laid, that's the security on what you're going to build on. They started building the foundation, and, and they were excited. They didn't let uh, Sam Ballard or anybody stop them at the time. But as soon as the foundation was laid, the enemy came in strong as can be. Some of you are getting some of the most diabolical attacks in your life right now, being that a foundation of grace is being laid for your life. And many of you, I want to encourage you that wherever grace is abound, sin is going to always try to attack you anyway. But I'm here to tell you, it's by the grace of God, you, you are who you are. You are the I am. Say, I am the I am. If you're born again, you have an I am that's in you. Amen? Amen. Come on now. I am more than a conqueror. Come on now. You have the I am on the inside of you. But what happened was he stopped them from building. Say, stop from building. Stop from building. 15 years, they didn't do nothing. Stagnant. Sitting around, just stuck going away. Stagnant. 15 years, did nothing because of the enemy. All of a sudden, Haggai the prophet comes up. Could you pull that up for me, please? Haggai chapter 1. I'd rather read it to you. I want to show you what happens when God brings a word and sends forth a word to his people. And then he also let them know why nothing's going to work in your life without the grace of God. As long as you are in works, it's not by grace. He was letting them know back then that you're trying to do this on your own and you, you got holes in your pocket, you're doing everything, and my house is not being built. I ain't talking about this physical house. I'm talking about you for being the house of God. God is ready to build us up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, able to make uh, sacrifices unto God. We can never build this house until our house is built. So God began to deal with them. And he said, hey, wait a minute. He said, the prophet had got, they sat around for 15 years, and look what's, what's the said here. Uh, put it in, you put it in the TPT. You want the TPT. I'm just letting them kind of guide because I see the service shifting, so I'm not going to try to follow everything. I'm just going to go on the way the Spirit of God needs me. Amen? Amen? I can just sense that God is doing stirring. There's a stirring going on. Amen? Amen. Let, him, let him bring to the surface the, the, the flavor and those things that have been lying dormant for too long. Amen? Some of you have made a decision years ago and said, you know what, God, I'm going to do whatever you call me to do. Some of you got in a little trouble, maybe got hurt, got an injury and said, God, I'm going to serve you. And God said, I'm going to stir you up again. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In the second year, oh, say again? Oh, that's okay. I'll read it in this one. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord. And what came to him? The word of the Lord. By Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shaphtal, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And this is what he said. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house thy waste? Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Say, consider my ways. Consider my ways. You have so much, and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. That don't sound like grace being more than enough for me, you are. You drink. We just talked about drink, drink, drink. You're not filled with drink. You close you. But there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to do what? Put it into a bag with holes. How many of you ever been just working and feel like you can't get ahead? Come on, raise your hand. If you've been through that before. You ain't got to say that. You ain't got to say that. Like Have you ever been where well, you knew that every time you look up, all the bills are still there and I have not enough? Everybody ought to have your hand up unless you ain't have to die. Go up to the mountain, thus said the Lord of the host, consider your way. Go up to the mountain and 
bring wood, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says the Lord. Here it is. You look so much, and though it came to look, and when you brought it home, who blew upon it? God said, I blew upon it. You're going to tell you why, says the Lord. Because my house, that is waste, and you run every man to his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is saved from dew, and the earth is saved from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, look at that, y'all, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of their hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shaphtel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, look what happened. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent them, and the people did what? Fear. Reverence. Say reverence. Reverence. A divine reverence. Finish up something out here. God take us somewhere. I'm excited. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's messenger to the people, saying, I, this is what he said. God said to them, I am with you, said the Lord. And the Lord stirred up, here it is, there is stirring. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shaphtel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. And he told me, and it, and it happened in 21 days. 21 days, God stirred the people and everything got in order. My prayer today is that this word will begin to stir you as I share it with you, that it begin to stir the hearts of the people to such, a, to such an extent that you teach your mind for yourself and get your mind on the work of the Lord or what God has called us to do. Is not God big enough to take care of his people? Y'all answer that for me. Yes. Come on, y'all. Y'all were screaming just a minute ago. Is God big enough to take care of his people? Yes. yes. Shut up. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. Put that in TPT for me. I didn't put it on there, but I want you to put it on there. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. The TPT Bible. Church, just the word is going to change your life. I'm not obligated to give you nothing else but what God has already said. Amen? If you take, if you take what God has already said and has already done for your life and begin to walk out what's already been finished, man, your life going to change forever. It's the word that's going to change you. Don't let nobody tell you nothing else. It's the word that's going to secure you. It's going to keep you for the rest of your life. The word is the only thing that's going to endure in these last days. Everything else is going to fade away. The word is what endures. That's why God wants us to get this understanding in the message of grace being full of truth. The word being full of grace and truth. So you'll understand that when you hear the word, it's got to be full of undeserved faith. You don't deserve it. No, you don't. But God, and then what's this? It extends your heart to know that why would you love me so much? The question is, why you keep doing this so being so good to me? Because it's his great love. Are we the love man God? Amen. And he's ready to extend it to a what's this? An undeserved society. Amen. That's called grace. Right. And until you receive that grace, you will think you gotta please God some way. And you always, every time you fall, you score a high. Every time you make a mistake, because when you're on your high, you praise the Lord. Can I testify? Can I testify? Then as soon as you fall, you hide. You ain't even in church. Because it's works. It ain't about you don't deserve it. I'm so grateful that God saved me by his grace. I'm so grateful that when I was at my lowest of lows, his grace came and lifted me out of the muck and mire and clay. Set my feet on the established block so I could get the going. He established your going. He gets you out there on that rock and say, go! Oh, yeah. There's things you must do in this earth, church. God did not put you on this earth to eat, drink, and die. Yes, and that's some of y'all. It's all your mind. Damn, the church over shit. I got yeah. something to do. Yeah, go do it. <laughs> God is going to fill this paper up with hungry people. Right. People ready to eat off the ground. I said, Lord, I'll eat the crumbs, Lord. Yeah. 
People out here don't know they don't deserve it. But man, when they come here and get this undeserved grace, they're going to come in here and they're going to see the love of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand for it. Now, hold me to y'all. The King James say, it is God that worketh in me. Say, God works in me. God works in me. Both to will and do. Of his, of his good pleasure. But before that verse, he says it's something you got to work out. You can never work out what God has not worked into you. Y'all understand that? So I, it's almost like it's backwards, but I want you to see. He says, work out your salvation. My beloved ones, just like you've always listened to everything I've taught you in the past, I'm asking you now to keep following my instructions as though I were right there with you now. This is Paul in this apostolic ministry writing to another church. He says this. Uh, he was locked up, as a matter of fact. Now you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy all God which brings you trembling into his presence. Here it is. God will continually revitalize you and planting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Y'all see that? Put that in the NLT. One more, one more verse. I mean, one more uh, translation. Because this is gonna, this is gonna take us right where the rough piece of road. I'm gonna go. Twelve and thirteen. Yes, thanks so much. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard. Say work hard. Work hard. To show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For it, for God is working in you. Say, God is working in me. Giving me the desire. God is working in you, giving you the desire. You don't have to change your desire. God's going to change your desire. That's been the problem. Some of you have been trying to change your desire. You're getting frustrated. Let God, through his grace, work in you to begin to change your desire. How many you ready for God to change your desire? It ain't up to you to change your desire. That's the problem. You in works. You're trying to do something that you're not obligated or you can't do in the first place. When I want to do good, what happens? Sin is present with me. Every time I'm trying to do what's right, I end up doing what's wrong. God said, because it's me working in you. Let me bring the desire. So if God ain't brought the desire yet, just wait on it. Amen? Amen. Continue to just trust him and serve him and worship him and begin to walk in a, a prayerful lifestyle. I was telling my wife this morning, you know what a lifestyle, this is what God, I, I was driving. God said this, he said, part of your prayer life now, Byron, he said, because so many things are going on, you're going to be grown now. We see so many things just like Jesus heard and saw with them with Lazarus. They come up, he did it, and he began to groan in the spirit. Most of your life of prayer is going to be right. <sighs> hearing what's on the news and seeing things. <sighs> you don't even know you're praying. You're praying with groanings that cannot be articulated with the Holy Spirit, you know. And he gives those deep things. Some of you ain't know you've been praying, but you've been groaning. You've been praying. <sighs> How many you been groaning? Ain't that interesting? You don't even know you've been praying. God said, we're going to learn how to live a lifestyle of supplication and prayer, intercession, groanings, all those things that cannot be articulated so you will understand that you ain't got to always drop to your face and call it prayer. Sometimes you can be looking at something happening and saying, mm, mm, God knows that. <laughs> oh, that's good news to be told. Look at that. For God is working in you, giving you the desire the what? The desire and the what? Come on, y'all. Say power. power. <laughs> he will give you the desire. Not only will he give you the desire, he will empower you to do what pleases him. You got to hear praise for that. Church as the body of Christ, we're all members in particular. Yes. 
many of you don't even realize some of you are hidden behind the scenes because you're the most important part of the body because you're like the stomach that we cannot see. Right. You're the heartbeat to this church. Amen. Because I can be seen don't make me the important one, you church. Y'all see me all the time. Some of you are so much important that you don't even realize. And I'm here to encourage you that there's a gift on the inside of you. And God's going to show you the grace gifts that are there. He's going to stir up some things in you today so you will understand that I am important. I am somebody. Amen? Amen. If everybody was one eye, if we all did the same thing in this church, we'll look like a monster. Have you ever seen one big eye? That don't make no body. One big old eye just comes under your body. Or an eye with a ear. It don't make a difference. We got to be the body of Christ. We got to start functioning in that way. And we got to see it that way. If we don't, we'll keep all trying to do the same stuff. I'm doing what God has worked in me. He put a desire in me to teach him and to proclaim his word, teach his word of grace. And I'm going to let him empower me to do it. I promise you, he'll get it done. All you got to do is yield to him. Say, I'm going to yield to God today. Yeah. Some of you guys don't realize how special you are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, God wanted me to let you know, every one of you in this body is so important. Yeah. Yeah. We need you. We sing that song, yeah. and we don't realize the, the essence of how much we need yeah. one another. Yeah. We're a part of God's body. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Come on now, we can go on 21. I'm going to a little faster today. So I learned how to just kind of roll it over. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 7. Now you can go into the, to the, uh, your app that you have for me. Let's give God a hand praise for bringing great food work to me. Amen. Sometimes you can put down scriptures and God take you a whole different way, just like simple worship service. He you saw worshiping, and before you know, you take you in a whole different direction. Amen. Healing was made available today. Amen. Amen. And He has generously given each one of us. Don't y'all miss this? He has generously given each one of us supernatural grace. Say supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. According to the size of the gift of Christ. This is why He says He ascended. He ascends into the heavenly heights, taking his many captured ones with him, and gifts were given to men. He ascended means that he returned to heaven after he had first descended from the heights of heaven, even to the lower regions, namely the earth. The same one who descended is also the one who ascended above the heights of heaven. In order, why? In order to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. And he has appointed some, but y'all miss this, he has appointed some with grace to be what? 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 Yes. And some with grace to be teachers. I'm going to go to the next verse, but I'm going to stop there. Every one of the five-fold ministry gifts is grace gifts. He gave gifts unto men. Y'all understand that? The word gifts comes from a Greek word, charisma. How many of you heard the word charisma? Amen. That's when you get the word, that's when the Greek word charisma. The, 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 uh, the root, I mean, the uh, breakdown of that is charisma. Charisma is grace. That's why it's called grace gift. If the church would have known that before, we wouldn't have had to get in so many works in our gifts. Because why? It's by grace that you were gifted, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You don't have to work it. Watch this. God will work it in you. It's the gift of God, not of works, unless any man should work. And we wonder why our society and our churches are being laughed at. And we wonder why things are happening all around the world, right, right inside the church. And yet God told me, this is a word for the whole, for the universal church. His body is okay. He is doing a great work in spite of what the world tries to make us look like. That's right. The world is trying to sh shut us down. We have in church, they in the club now. We doing all these other things as if the church is not effective. But you know what? They only give you what you want to see. As long as you want a television, they will tell you their vision that they want you to see. But it's people hidden in small places like this all around the world that ain't bowed down. 
that's in the grace of God. Understand that it is not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord, says the Lord of all. And they're shouting, Grace! Grace! Be grace unto every mouth. I'm telling you today, church, you and I must wake up because we're living in a society that is downplaying everything that God has already established by His grace. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Where sin abounds, guess what? Grace. Let me ask you something. Are we in the right place in Glasgow Village? Yes. You will be in the right place if you was in Old Fowler. Sin is abounding everywhere. So grace is, is ready to abound through the church. Amen? Amen. So you, you, we got to have these gifts. We have an apostle here. You have a, a pastor, a shepherd, and a teacher. I'm a shepherd and a teacher. I can tell you what I am. Amen? I, I've been called a shepherd and I can teach because he's anointed me to teach. Amen? Amen. And they're calling us to do what? Nurture. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do with this grace gift on our lives? Nurture and prepare. All the holy believers to do what? Their own works. Their own works? Because we everybody, we, everyone who got something to do. That's right. Don't look at me like I'm we got to do something. Every one of you, our job is to nurture you and prepare you to do what you're supposed to be doing. The works of what? Ministry. What is ministry? Service. That's all what ministry means. Ministry ain't this holy word. You can minister by giving service or administer something means to give something that you have. You administer the gift that God has given you. Amen? All right. As they do, as they do this, what's going to happen, y'all? They're going to do what? They're going to do what? How the body can ever be built if you don't know you have your own work to do in this place? We got to get this revelation, church, and it's by grace. It has nothing to do with yourself. We don't need a bunch of people say, I'll do this and get frustrated. How many of you ever, how many of you ever did something and say, I'm tired of it? Now it's normal for you to get tired of it, but I'll take grace and bring you right on back up and, 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 and be sufficient because I am who I am. And woe is me if I don't do this because I know I'm grace to do it. Amen? Amen? And as they do this, they will enlarge the body and build the body of Christ. Next. These grace ministries, oh, look at her. He don't call us all out now. These grace ministries will function until we all attain what? Until we all experience what? The fullness of what it means to know Jesus as the grace of God. I can interpret that now. Not just knowing the Son of God. He is grace revealed to you and I. You'll see it in a minute. And finally we become one into a mature, that word perfect means complete or mature man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully developed in what? The abundance of Christ. <laughs> Did I stop there? Okay. Now let's go right on into uh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. I only got a couple verses though. And his fullness fills you. Just let me listen to me read this, y'all. Even though you were once like corpses, dead in your sins and offenses, it wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion, customs, and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm, that's Satan, y'all, who fills the atmosphere. He fills this atmosphere with his authority. That's why you and I must change the atmosphere. We, we live under a different kingdom, but you and I must walk in a different atmosphere. He's the prince of the power of the atmosphere, of the air. But let me tell you something, Paul. We have authority over that. Satan, Jesus has already defeated everything that he's done. And if we don't begin to create that atmosphere wherever we go, man, you can command peace wherever you go. Church, I'm guess you, some of you need to go on your job and, and command peace wherever you go. Wherever your feet shall tread. Your boss acting a fool, you begin to pray for your boss and shake the dust off your feet. Some of you want to shake the dust off your feet because God trying to take you to something better. But you're so scared, you don't believe God got something better for you. So you're taking the abuse. you let letting Pharaoh beat you down because you think that's a little money. That ain't nothing, said the Lord. Yeah. God said, I got to work for you to do it. It's here what I need you to do. Once you release it, trust me, you're going to see I'm going to open up doors this year. This is the year of open doors. I'm not only opening up doors, I'm opening up windows, say the Lord. I'm pulling out some things for you. I'm getting you prepared for the passion that you should be resting in. You were born to rest. You were born to work. Some of y'all 
working like dogs, ain't getting nothing. Pockets still got holes in them. Can't get nothing done. Don't do accumulate more bills with what you got. And God said, can't you see? I'm trying to get you to a place of rest. Where now watch this. Rest is simply, it's not uh, inactivity, it's Holy Ghost directed activity. That means God is taking you to the money. You know where the fish is mouth at. You know where the coins at. You got favor, grace all over your life. You got favor with me and God. Everywhere you go, you got one door. Say, I need this. They say, here you go. <laughs> He gave all the joy. Church, we finna go. We finna be raptured. Y'all ain't understand. It's things that we have to have in this Thank season you. of our life. Because it's things that must be done. Because there are people that God is bringing into the kingdom. Give God a hand praise. He said he fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that, that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. Say self-life. Self -life. We live by whatever natural cravings. That's how we did it. Come on now. Maybe we still doing. We live by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated. Living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everyone else. But God. Say but God. But God. He still loved us with such a great love. Even in your mess. He still loved us. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when, even when, even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us. Come on, y'all. He didn't just save you. He raised you. <laughs> it's one thing to save you and leave you there. It's another thing to save you and raise you up. It's one thing to save you and leave you in your ditch. It's another thing to save you and lift you up. Amen. My problem is, is why we not lifted up? Some of you still at the stage of salvation and not letting God. You know why? Because you still want to do it your way. And until you surrender, he can't lift you up. He is not a forceful God. These are unforced rhythms of grace. Grace is unforced. It's not demand. The law demands. Your performance says you better do it this way. Your law says you get it here, you better have this quote. That's a demand. And if you don't, there's consequences behind it. God said, even when you was messing up, I love you. <laughs> How can you run from a God like that? So you know you should have been dead and gone. No, the bullet should have leaked off through your body. But God saved you by his grace. Why do you think he did that? Because he had a calling and a purpose for your life in his earth. And until you wake up and understand that, you'll keep going around the same mountain until Satan take you out. Because he know, he knows what's in you. You just don't know. The devils believe in Trump. They know what's on the inside of every Christian. Their job is to make you be blinded to what God is trying to reveal to you. Is that good? He raised us with Christ and the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glorious perfection. God be catch this. When you was raised, he ascended you into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. And we are now co seated as one with Christ. Throughout the coming ages, here it is, we will be, don't y'all miss this, throughout the coming ages, we will be the visible display of the infinite riches of his grace and kindness. You and I are supposed to be a display of God's kindness and grace toward mankind. You and I should be the example of how his grace saved us and raised us into a heavenly realm. And now we don't live like everybody else lives. We don't move like everybody else moves. God is stirring up mindsets right now. God is saying you cannot lie down with me. God is doing it in the mind. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm stirring up your mind today. I'm, I'm allowing you now for this thing to surface up so that I can begin to show you my grace and kindness. No, we don't deserve it. But he wants to show you undeserved favor. Amen? Amen. Is that good news to somebody? Amen. You didn't have to come to church and have to do something, be made to do something. You need to stop. If you can stop, you will stop. Amen. Man, when I was on that track, I wanted to stop. I would that wasn't me, y'all. I was cool. I was cool being on crack. I was still looking good on crack. <laughs> real job. I still, you know, I might not have took a bath too late. I was fucking sure. For sure. I ain't giving the devil no, 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 no praise, but I'm telling you today. When I was out there in that scene and I was in that mess, God, God's love came and grabbed me. 
I remember all the words that were spoken to me when I was going through that back in the 80s. I was, this is in the 80s for me, y'all. This is in the 80s. I was not about the 90s. I was gone. I was in prison. This was in the 80s. And I'm trying to share with you all, God can take you and raise you up and turn your life all the way around, church, where it will be a total transformation that somebody would have to ask you, was that you back then? Amen? Amen. 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 So let's stop right there. We need to stop right there because it's God wants to display. He wants to put you on display of his kindness and his grace of what he's done for you so that others can say, what must I do to be saved? Amen. 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 I think I got at least one more. I got one. I got two verses. Left. Second Timothy 1 9. This blessed me, y'all. In the King James Version. Now, how do you notice that? Uh, I know you're going to notice, but in 1 Timothy 1 verse 7, it says, God is not giving you. He's talking to Timothy. He told Timothy, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. I never understood that, that that was the reverential fruit of God, that power and love, that sound mind was the reverential fruit of God. Amen? But the verse before that, he said, don't you neglect the gift that's upon your life that was, that was laid upon you by the elders of the church. Now watch this. I said, God, what are you saying to this? And as I begin to study and, and do what I need an intense study just this morning, and God said, when Paul laid his hands on him, watch this, when Paul laid his hands on him, it was a stern. It was something that was stern and bolded to him because he was timid. He wanted he, that gift that was on him. It was a gift by grace. Paul can never give him something that, of, of, him, of himself. God, listen, even when they're in there is an importation of a gift from you, it's still God. Y'all understand that? Yeah. Everything that happens is from the Lord. Every good gift comes from us. The Father of all. The whom there is no verb or chant shall return. Y'all understand that? Even, even your children, when you lay hands on them, that it's a divine importation of your love for them, but you ain't trying to give them everything you got. I hope you ain't. Because there's a lot of stuff that I don't want to give my kids that I had in my life. There's a lot of still things that we deal with today that you don't want to import on your children. Don't, don't, don't play with God. Don't play with God. We can't play with God here. The truth of the matter is, it is God that does the work. And you and I must give total trust on what God has for us. Amen? Amen. We got to understand that it's a gift from God. Amen? Because what happened is we think we worked something, we made something happen. And it's not a works because we're boast about it. You know when you boast about something, you say, you got it. I got that. You got that? I got it. How many of y'all was in the street? Come on, I don't have to play with y'all. How many of y'all was in the street saying, who got that stuff? Who got that fire? I got that. <laughs> you boasting about it. Why you all over there for, man? You got it over here. See, that's what boasting to do. Try that, try this. See, God, I mean, you know what I love about the Lord? He get all up in my business. He get all up in my stuff. And I ain't got no problem with it. Because I want change in my life. I don't run around. I don't want to run around and people looking at me laughing when they get home. Calling, telling me my character is something different than what I desire to express from God. Come on, church, we got to get this right. Amen. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm telling everybody today. Because it starts from the pulpit to the door. Yes. We got to let God's grace be sufficient for everything in our lives. Every one of us. Yes. Amen? Amen. He called, he has saved us, say he saved me. What else did he do? With the what? <laughs> when he saved you, he called you on the phone. I'm going to put it that way so y'all understand. When he saved you, after you got saved, you calmed down, you was excited. Hey, listen, this God, I'm just calling you to let you know I got some a work for you to do. That's the reason I saved you. You gotta hear, you gotta answer the line today, church. Some of you done let the phone off the hook, they done get away past. Eh, 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 eh. It just ain't nothing to be saved. And God said, when I saved you, I called you. And when I called you, I called you to set you apart with this calling. You ain't like everybody else. When I called you, I want you to let you know you're different. It's a holy calling. Say a holy calling. I set you apart before the foundation of the world. I separated you before you was in your mother's womb. I knew you. I have a calling for you. So when I saved you, 
I couldn't call you before I saved you, but I already knew you was called. But when you got saved, I had to call you on the phone. So he called you and said, hello, hey, Byron, how you doing? I said, man, I'm in jail. <laughs> That's when I answered the phone call. I didn't answer the call the other time. My question is, when you gonna answer the phone? Because it's a holy call. He said you apart for something in this season. The door is open today. Watch this. It is not according to your own. It's not. Uh, it's not according to our what? Our works. Say it's not according to my works. There's nothing you can do or can't do to get this out. But it's according to His own what? which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world even began. God had already purposed and graced you before the world even began. He said, I, I, there's coming a time where them and the Holy Ghost are going to meet up and there's going to be a drawing to such a place where I save them. But yet when I save them, I got to make sure they answer the line. My question today to you is would you answer the call today? Play some music today. God is saying when you answer the call. Now, when you do answer the call, I'm just going to have you to stand up for, for the sake of time. But I want you to answer the call. Amen? Amen. God already told me there's a stirring going on. So some things that have lined on me. God had been speaking to you years ago about some things. He's giving you vision about things. That's going to be a divine stirring on the inside of you. There's been distractions because of your works. Your works are getting away. God does not mix works with grace. God said, spew it out of my mouth. I can't handle it. It's nasty. I want, I want to stir some things up on the inside of you. I want to create back in you this righteousness that you already have available to you, but you don't know it. So you're trying to do everything right, trying to do everything, and then before you know it, it's only a matter of time you're going to crash again. And you're going to be upset. You're going to be mad. Somebody's going to offend you. You're going to leave the church for a while. God says, time out for all of that. You can't keep going around these mountains in your life. Come on, somebody got to speak somebody for today. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to answer the phone today, just stand up. Hallelujah. If you want to answer the call today, just stand up. And if you're not saved, come up to the front. Hallelujah. God told me everybody to stand up. That would be a supernatural empowerment. He's going to work a desire on the inside of you. That's going to be a desire. Some of you lost your desire. I lost the desire. You ever been in a relationship and lost the desire? You ever been in a friendship and lost the desire? God is saying today, I'm going to create that desire back on the inside of you. Lift your hands up like we're here today. I'm going to give you one more minute. Some more people to stand in. Hallelujah. Some more people to stand in. God say all you got to do to act of faith is to stand the act of faith is I'm waiting on you today. The act of faith is to stand. Stand. The enemy don't want you to stand. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto your salvation. Hallelujah. I don't care how many times you stand. If you stand every time I preach this word, let me tell you, that's what it's all about. If you can hear something every week to come and get what you need, that's what it's all about. Amen? Ain't none of us perfect. We all need him. And so every time you stand it, every word is different. Every word is empowered by grace. You stand up and you get what you need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you right now for a divine stirring like never before. 
I thank you that you have already begun to work on the des desires today. Work in them, Lord. Work in them both to will and to do. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Stir in your desire, Lord. Take away these wills that I've been having. Lord, take away the desires that have been trying to override your desire. And Father, I answer the call today. I pick it up today. Hallelujah. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart clearly today. As you begin to work that thing out on the inside of me, I'm working in, I'm going to work it out. Say, I'm going to work it out. God has a great work for you to do. God is working in you, but you're going to work out, and you're going to work harder than you've ever worked before. Not by the, your own works, but by the grace of God, you are who you are. Amen? Grace is going to take you. You're not, you're not going to be tired. You're not going to be weary. Come on, church. Grace will have you doing more than everybody else. And God give you the replenishment that you need. Amen? I, 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 I refuse, even when it sometimes feels like it in my body, I refuse to declare that I'm tired. I'm not tired yet. <laughs> Woo, every time the enemy try to attack me, church, I get I, my wife will tell you, I start abounding with grace. I said, well, God, give me the grace. I've already prayed for y'all, so just look up at me now. Y'all can sit on down. Hallelujah. From this, from starting this week, we're praying from 6 o'clock to 6.15 every morning. God told me that he gave me the, 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 you know, just gave me the leeway, and I talked to the apostle, he gave me the leeway to go and begin to pray from 6 a.m. Some of you ain't going to wake up. I don't that ain't even none of my business. This is not a mandate. This is an opportunity to begin to pray before you get up. There ought to be a morning glory for your life. Some of you just get up and jump up like fire and just go do what you do. And don't even think about God until later until something happens. But come online. If you got a prayer request, come on at 650, 650, I mean 5.55 and put on your prayer request. But we're praying, this to me, we're praying from 6 to 6.15. 6 to 6.15. Say 6.15. 6 Tell your neighbor 6.15. If not, the, the phone won't hang up. We got control over this thing now. Come on now. We give it time. Let's be, let's be about people's. Let's, let's be honorable about people's time. Amen. Time is important. It's of an essence. Amen. So when you get up in the morning, just tune on in if you want to tune on. If you don't want to tune on, you sleep late. That's okay. That ain't, that, that ain't no problem. But if you can, tune on in. Maybe it's the day you get up early. Tune on in. Amen. Is that good? And you know what I'm doing? I'm telling you what I'm doing. Because sin trying to abound. God, 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 God told me to abound. Let my grace be sufficient for you. Yes. Nothing else matters to me, church, but to do what God called me to do. I mean that, but I'm my heart. Nothing else matters to me. I pray that be the same <coughs> purpose for your life. If everything stopped right now, if this church was to close down today, would they miss us? What is, it, what is it that we can begin to get together and stay in prayer so that we can get ready for the influx of what God is doing? Can y'all look around? Look around. Y'all see what's going on? Look at that one man right there, y'all. One man can bring in people. And y'all don't y'all ain't understand it. This is the woman at the wheel. You ain't understanding. This one person sit on the wheel, one person go out and affect their own family, affect their community. This ain't no game, church. When some of us been born again so long, we ain't affecting nobody no more because we done lost the faith. Save with God said, I want to stir you back up again. You don't need to get all the way down there. Some of you don't even realize it's so hard. You got to get, get a stick. <laughs> you know how you get like mud. You're like, yeah, it's going to turn into glue. You got to put a little bit more water on the word. You got to put some water on it so you can get that stuff. Because it just starts thinking in on you. And you got hard in your heart. You got hard in your heart. God said, this water and this word is going to Amen. 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 Amen